Luke Thomas here in Houston, Texas, before the Bellator 149 press conference here with uh, I see Mike, Mike Ember, who is the manager of Kimbo Slice. Did I get that right? You got it right. Okay, th this is really interesting, interesting to me. How, how did you come to know Kimbo Slice? And then you've been with him as long as I've seen him around. Tell me about the history of your relationship. We went to high school together. And that's where it all got started? It did. And then, you know, we went our separate ways at college, but we ended up reuniting like uh, in 99. Now, when you were in high school, what was the nature of your relationship then? Just friends? We were friends, and um, yeah, he always looked after me. What was he like in high school? Give me a sense of Kevin Ferguson, the high school kid. Well, he didn't look much different than he looks now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, probably what you would imagine. And how did it happen that you were, uh, we got back together? You're both still living in the Miami area this time, right? He was, um, he was working security at a strip club, and... You know, I had gone there to meet some friends. It was actually owned by uh, Trick Daddy's dad, and we went over there to meet up. And who was working security? He was. And, you know, we hadn't seen each other in years. And he was actually in a cast because these people, these people had um, tried to drive over him. And he, he wanted to stop working there, and it just worked out great because I was just getting uh, our company going, and we started working together. And so the pitch was, don't get run over, don't work at strip clubs, come work for me? No, no, no. He, it was like mutual. I needed him, he, you know, he needed me, and plus we got to hang out all day, so it worked out good. And how, how old were you both at the time? Um, so 16 years ago, I mean, I, I, was, I was 23, he was probably 25, 26. So what is it you know about Kimbo Slice that the world doesn't, right? We've seen him interviewed a thousand times at this point, seen him fight a thousand times at this point, but he seems to me a guy, he likes to find that loyal center and then hold it. Is that right? Yeah, well, I mean, we have the same group of friends around us that we've had since, you know, we kind of got into the professional fighting and all, and all that, and um, yeah, we keep a small circle. It's interesting, too, you know, just from physical appearances, you and Mike Brown, oh, I mean, you can be, no, 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 you can be friends with whoever in this yeah. world, but, it, but it, there's, a, there's a total conflation of opposites in terms of appearances. I'm not as, I don't have that look. <laughs> Is there something to that? I mean, he must have a wide array of friends, I'm sure, of course, and associates, but there is something kind of funny about that, right? He just, uh, he's got the right people around him. So, yeah, I don't think looks matter. Not in this crew. And when you said he took care of you in high school, what does that mean? Were you up to no good? You needed a little muscle, or how did that work? Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead and stand, by all means. You forgot your phone? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, everyone needs that kind of help, you know, here and there, but, um, yeah, we, it just goes, uh, goes a way back. All right, so let's talk about his opponent real quick, uh, Defeer Harris, out of 5,000. Um, there's a lot of animus between these two. Where does it all stem from, and what do you make of it? Well, I personally think, you know, he's infatuated with him. If you look at his, like, social media, he's got more pictures of Kimbo on there than of himself. I think the closer he gets to the fight, the more afraid he's going to be because all he can do is talk. And, I mean, just for the first time, people saw him at the open workout yesterday hitting – pads, heavy bag, whatever, and he looks like total shit, and his mouth can't get him out of that. So I think that's what they're going to see out of him. You know, he, he should uh, be able to take a good beating, and hopefully the ref lets it, let it go down. What do you make of these claims about authenticity, right? Well, so, good question. Um, he's not authentic. He's ref more fights than he's been in, and his own little shit that he's put together. He's had one bullshit fight in it. I mean, if you've seen it, the guy was horrendous. His two pro fights, the guy's total records are one in 16, and they had to pull that grown man off of him or he would have lost one of them. And all he's got is, you know, his mouth behind him. This isn't the WWE, and he's going to get fucking hurt. And, hope, you know, now that Friday's right around the corner, I just hope he shows up because he's backed out of fights before. Hopefully he shows up to this. Do you think he's one and done here at Bellator? Um, well, I mean, if he gets knocked out in spectacular fashion, maybe they bring him back to get knocked out again. Yeah. But other, other than that, you don't, you don't envision a long-term future? Yeah, they better not keep him. No. All right, fair enough. They're smart guys. They're not going to keep him. But they, if, if he does look good getting knocked out, maybe, you know, they bring that back. Talk to me about managing in the MMA space. Is it, is it a bizarre industry? I mean, you have an unusual client. Oh, well, I just, you know, I just do this for him just because we're friends. You know, I've never taken a, a percent from him. I've never taken any of his money. I just do it for him. You're here gratis? Oh, always, since, since day one. Never took one dollar from him. And so what's in it for you? You just want to make sure the guy's taken care of? 
yeah, you know, like I said, you know, we've been friends for a while, and yeah, just do it, uh, do it on the friendly tip. It's family. But you, to what extent do you like look over his contracts and whatnot? Of course, yeah. yeah. So I guess what I mean is, even if this is the only fighter you represent, right. what do you make of the MMA industry? Are they exploitative of their talent? Is it fair if you're Kim? How's it work? Um, no, actually, I think the MMA world is there's more integrity and it's easier than the boxing world because you know we've dealt with both even though you know we had a great promoter in the boxing world um but yeah it's it's been you know i don't i don't think there's anything that's funny or weird about it you know it's been pretty straight up and these guys at bellator have been great to deal with you know mike hogan's been awesome and uh yeah it's been a good experience with them can you give me an example of what it might have been different in the boxing space uh it's you know um a little less trustworthy operators? You know, there's just a lot more behind the scenes that go on with it. It's, not, it's definitely not as uh, corporate. So you could imagine all different types of things happen. I heard a rumor. You can confirm it for me. The rumor is that this is the last fight on Kimbo's current contract with Bellator. That's not true. So did he, win or lose, he intends to keep competing? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's not losing, but yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going to keep competing. As long as he wants to, you know. How much longer do you think, realistically, if you had to guess, how much longer he's got? I think he's definitely got a good four or five fights in him. But, I mean, that's really a question for him. But I'd have to say four or five good fights. And so when, when he hangs it up, you're all done with MMA. Is that right? Well, I'm, I'm a huge fight fan. So I'll never be done with MMA. I'll go watch the events, I'll, you know. I'll go to all the good fights. All right, Mike, I, you've been interesting to watch him guide his career. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thank you.